If you have ADHD, having an organized home is extra hard. Our brain wants as few steps as possible in everything that we do. So if something's hard to put away or even a little bit complicated, we just won't do it. And complicated can mean like, opening a lid or unstacking a bin, even walking a few steps across the room, that complicates things for us. So I'm gonna show you how to uncomplicate your house, how to make it really ADHD friendly. And even if you don't have ADHD and you're stressed out or you're overwhelmed, this can mimic ADHD symptoms of distractibility and procrastination and, just needing an easier space. So I'm gonna share with you 15 things that you can do to make your whole home more organized. The first thing is letting your mess tell you what you need. Honestly, you are piling stuff where you're piling it for a reason. It's probably that that stuff doesn't have a home or putting it away is too far away or too hard to put away. Let your mess dictate how you should organize your space. So if you're piling on the kitchen counter, can you empty a drawer directly underneath for some of those things to go? Can you put a basket? right there. Can you install floating shelving on the wall or hooks? You really want to adapt your space based on where you're naturally piling because that is your brain telling you that that's the easiest place to put your stuff down. The other thing that we have to do is zone our house because we get distracted very easily. So zoning is probably the most important thing. What I mean by this is designating homes throughout your home and only keeping those type of categories within there. So here's an example. In my kitchen, I have a zone for breakfast food. I have a zone for baking. I have a zone for snacks. Even on a bigger picture, look at your living room and zone where you watch TV. Do you craft in this space? You have to like have a separate zone and section for that. When we mix categories together, we're really distracted. If we have a load of laundry in our office, we're not gonna be focusing on getting work done. So zoning your home into different categories and keeping them separate at all times is so important for our ADHD brain. And we go a step further, like within that zone, think big categories. You know where books go? On a bookshelf. That's a zone. We don't have to put them in alphabetical order. We don't have to like color coordinate. The bookshelf is the place where books belong. You have big baskets for big categories like snacks or like craft supplies and zone them into that category. And the next most important thing that you can do is not use lids because lids overcomplicate it. When we have these big macro categories, if we stack containers or we have a lid that we have to open, we're just gonna set it on top or beside. And just hearing myself say this, I'm like, what are those zones? What do they look like? Where do they go? This probably is overwhelming you. So here's the thing. I have a macro organizing guide that breaks down zones by room and categories within there to give you like a jumping off point. It's really easy to follow. You can pick one thing a day and just create homes for like your light bulbs or your batteries or your snacks this can make it easier. So I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below. It's totally free, but it can help you rethink your home into big macro categories. Okay, so speaking of categories, uh, ADHDers or chronically overwhelmed, stressed out people, we need categories for random. Not everything can be random, but dedicating spots for homeless or I don't know where this goes is critical for our ADHD brains. Another tool that we should use that's so important is a go back basket. I use a tidy tote for when I'm cleaning, but also at the bottom of the stairs, why not have a big basket for things that belong upstairs? And at the top of the stairs, have a big basket for things that belong downstairs. Like a go back basket means you can not have to leave the room or walk really far to put something away. And then at the end of the night, you empty your go back basket. This will 100% keep your house tidier. Another thing that we have to do is put a trash can in almost every room, especially where you normally just pile trash because we're lazy. We're not lazy. That's a bad word. We are just if we have to walk to put something away, we're not going to. Not only put a trash can 
in every room, put it where you're naturally piling trash, or if you're putting pop cans beside the couch, put a recycling bin right there. Put a laundry hamper where you toss your clothes on the floor, where you're making a pile. That's where your laundry hamper should go. This is about adapting your house to work with you, you not trying to adapt to your house. Okay, this is my favorite thing. It's giving yourself a time budget and capping it. Because listen, we have time blindness. Also, we procrastinate. Why? Because we're low on dopamine and we're seeking dopamine. And when we wait till the very last minute to do something, we get the dopamine. That's why you can like crush it. Your mother-in-law's like, I'll be over in 15 minutes. You will clean like you've never cleaned before because we have that time pressure. So timing yourself and giving yourself time pressure, even though it's like a fake thing and no one's actually coming over or you don't have that deadline, can increase your dopamine and, and really get you motivated to get the task done. Also using a timer means that you're not going to overestimate or underestimate how long something takes. I really love this cute little timer. It's like based on the Pomodoro method. I probably am not saying that right, but breaking tasks into chunks of three minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then it has an audible alarm. So it's really easy. You just like move the little brick over to whatever time you want, and then the race is on to get it done within that time. We need this. Whether you're ADHD or you're just stressed freaking out, you got to give these timer hacks a try. The most important space to focus on and zone if you have ADHD is definitely your entranceway, whether they call it like a landing zone or a launch pad, because listen, we are always running late and we always forget everything. And this sets us up for success, not only like in the outside world, but when we're coming home as well, it stops the clutter at the door. This means having hooks, having spots for purses and backpacks and keys and all the stuff that's in your hands. But also think about what you normally forget when you're leaving. I just watched a video from How to ADHD and got this amazing idea of having socks in our entranceway. We always forget to put on socks until we're about to put on our shoes and we're already late. We gotta run back upstairs. So now I just have a bag of socks in the entranceway. Life changing. If you always forget your phone, charge it in the entranceway. If you always forget your keys, make them really visual right there. Like this seems so obvious, but honestly, if you focus on making your entranceway, landing zone, launch pad, the most functional space in your house, it will change your life. I know I already said this, but I feel like I have to revisit this again. Do not have lids. You can have lids on like long-term storage, sure. Like your Christmas decorations, but don't have lids or like things that are gonna go stale. Use lids for those, but don't have lids on any containers, period. Do not stack if you use it all the time. And so important, friends, label the crap out of your bins, label them. Most ADHDers are visual, but even if you're not visual, a label sends a subconscious reminder to your brain that this is its home. And you're more likely to put things away. It also find, makes it easier to find everything. Labels are magical. They're wonderful. You need them in your life. Label everything. I promise you. It will make you more organized and more efficient and your entire house more functional. Please, please, please give this a try. I gotta take a second to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. I don't enjoy cooking, that's the honest truth. I don't like having to decide what's for dinner. I don't like having to go to the grocery store. So I love that HelloFresh, I get three meals every week. It takes the pressure off me and it's one less thing that I have to worry about. And because usually I forget I'm cooking and wander away and burn stuff, I appreciate the step-by-step -step instructions that have photos with them because it helps me focus and they're fast. Like a lot of these meals are almost all of them are under 30 minutes and it's on the table and it's delicious, way better than I would make without HelloFresh. My whole family loves it and it's just a real treat to myself and way better than fast food or takeout. 
If you want to give it a try, go to HelloFresh.com and use the promo code CLUTTERBUGFREE for free breakfast for life. You'll get one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. That again is CLUTTERBUGFREE at HelloFresh.com for free breakfast for life. Click that link in my description below. I want you to rethink paper organization because listen, let's burn filing cabinets. Let's kick them in the backyard and start a bonfire. If you are a big picture thinker and you have ADHD, filing cabinets suck. You can use them for long-term paper you never really deal with, but that day-to-day -day paper, it just doesn't work for us because it's complicated, because it's multiple steps to file something. So here's what you do instead. You have a spot for important papers to go. I got to deal with this. I call that an action file. You have a spot for papers to go that like, maybe I want to look at this and reference this a magazine you wanna read, or a recipe you wanna try, fine, that gets its own basket. And then anytime you pay a bill or you have a statement or you have a piece of paper that comes in the house that you've dealt with, it just goes in a big box or a basket labeled 2024 paid bills, done. And you only have to go through this at tax time. You only have to file papers one day a year. This is life freaking changing. I do not want you to just like pile all over the place. If you have these three separate spots for paper to go, like I got to pay the bill action. I might maybe deal with this reference and like I've dealt with this, but I'm not going to file it until I know I need it for my taxes or not. These three things, that's all you need for paper. Like seriously, it will keep you organized. And if you're a bit of a perfectionist, let me just tell you, as you pile it in the box, you are filing chronologically because the bottom's January, then February, then March, then April. So if you need something, it's not a big deal to look through and get it, but you don't have to deal with paper every single day. In fact, only one day a year. Another thing that ADHDers should do is use color when they're doing like boring stuff like paperwork or working. So different colored post-it notes, really important is one color, not so important, another color. Or if you are using file folders, make sure they're color coordinated, like green is money. I don't know, you get to pick the colors. But colors is that visual cue to our brain of categories and zones, which is how our brain works. Big categories, big zones, so use colors to help you identify those just at a glance. That leads me to the next really critical thing that I talk about in almost every video that I do, but it, let me tell you, if you have ADHD or you're stressed out, this is a must, and that is having a spot to brain dump. It can be a notebook, brain dump, and then picking three to five important things and like circling those that this is a priority. It doesn't matter what you use. If you're a planner person, I hate planners. If you're a post-it person, maybe just like a sheet of paper, it doesn't matter. Get the thoughts out of your brain because your brain is already going a mile a minute, man. You need to get it onto paper so that you can create a plan for yourself. Because as soon as you get it out of your brain and onto paper, you are way more likely to actually do it. And a way to help you actually do stuff is to book appointments with yourself. Before I did this, I got nothing done. I was like full squirrel, man. Where am I? What's happening? What am I supposed to do? So I book appointments with myself to remember to do everything from tidying to pay the bills. This is the day that you clean the toilets. I know this is, it seems ridiculous, but it's so critical. Like book an appointment with yourself every night to tidy up your house. These little appointments do something pretty amazeballs, which is they train yourself to have muscle memory. That's what this is all about. Like we need habits that our brain just does on autopilot because we would forget to remember them otherwise. So booked appointments mean this is what happens. I book an appointment throughout the day to do little five minute tidy ups. And now I'm in the habit of putting things away. Now my brain has this muscle memory. I don't need the alarms as often. I'm just doing it out of habit. I'm paying the bills on Friday out of habit. I'm cleaning the toilets out of on Sunday out of habit. Muscle 
memory, friends, and you can train your brain in as little as one week with these little appointments, which leads me to the last tip, which is use digital things to make up for the fact that we don't have executive function. Use alarms, use alerts. I have an Alexa in every single room. Sorry if you do too, and she's talking to you now, but I set alarms on my phone and everything's going off all the time because I will not remember to do it otherwise. I just won't. And if I'm doing something, I often will add it to my calendar and then add someone else, another loved one also to that appointment that I've made with myself. So they also are like, hey, your alarm's going off to do X, Y, Z. And I know this feels annoying and irritating, but we need to do this. We have to do this. You better have a calendar app on your phone and you had better have some sort of electronic device in your house to help you remember things like, hey, set a reminder in 15 minutes to do blah, blah, blah. Set a reminder on February 28th to do X, Y, Z. This is critical to having fake executive function. I spend a lot of time right now talking about how ADHD is a superpower and how it's so amazing and it's my favorite gift. And while that's all true, I also have to say like, it sucks. It also sucks. I have no short-term memory. I have no working memory, period. Like everything is harder when you have ADHD. So it is really important that not only we acknowledge the great parts of having it, so it isn't like a poor me victim fest, but also acknowledge that we need extra help. We need extra tools. We need to simplify things, not because we're dumb or lazy, but because our brain works differently. And if you don't even have ADHD and you're just stressed or overwhelmed, and guess what? A lot of clutter in a messy house mimics the symptoms of ADHD because you are distracted by freaking everything and everywhere you look, there's something to do. And your brain's like, oh my gosh, this and this and this and this and this. That's what ADHD feels like. So even if you don't have it, if you are living in a chronically disorganized space in life, you kind of have it. You know what I'm saying? And we treat it the same way. We create simplified systems. We stop trying to make, you know, uh, trying to like work within our house and the and the, the box that we're given. And instead we remake the box and we make our house work for us. We hack our ADHD so that where we're naturally putting things down, that's where we put it away. So that things are so easy, we might as well put it away instead of putting it down. This is the secret, friends, and using every tool that we can to just make life easier. It's never gonna go away, okay? It's not, it's not, it's not gonna like fix us, but it will make your life easier. And I am so passionate about this. After really suffering for the first 40 years of my life, like what's wrong with me? Now that I know and I can adapt, it's like, a weight off my shoulders and I want that for you too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are feeling inspired and you got like maybe a little tip, put the socks in your entranceway and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I know I've shared this before, but I've been like, uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD at 40 and I started on medication basically right away and I've been unmedicated due to like a heart issue for the last just over a month. At first, I was like, the medication's not really doing anything. It's okay. It's it's slightly improving my life. But now I'm realizing what the heck is going on because every day I do this. Where am I? What am I doing? Why am I in this room? What am I supposed to be working on? What day is it? Here's what happened after Christmas. I bought Milo's shoes for Christmas and they were too small. So I put them by the back door to remind me to to drop them back off at the mall. And every day I would forget, I would forget, I would forget. So I set an appointment with myself on a Friday. This is the day, the only thing you're doing that day, because with ADHD, we can't do multiple things. You know what I'm saying? Is go to the mall and return the shoes. So I get to the mall and I'm bumping my, my, my nineties hip hop the whole way there. I pull in. I have no idea why I'm at the mall. So I just go shopping and I'm buying random things that I don't need. And I walk past the shoe store and I'm like, I am here to return shoes. So I go to my van. I didn't even put the shoes in the van. 
I forgot to bring them. And this friend is like every single day. I leave the house, I forget while I'm driving where I'm even going or why I'm leaving the house. Like, it's like 50 first, 50 first dates, you know, with Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler. If you haven't seen that movie, I feel like she doesn't have brain damage. She has ADHD. That's how I feel. And I want to know if I am not alone. It's crazy pants. And so I'm really like, I'm in the thick of it, friends. And I'm making a doctor's appointment to like get back on some kind of medication because this is hard. <laughs> Every day's hard and everyone around me, poor Emily, she's like, I know, I know what Emily's thinking. She's like, are you okay? <laughs> I'm difficult to work with. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.